الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلا حيا للفلا Hello everybody, um, so I wanted to look at the most important, one of the most important uh, discussions that uh, I've ever discussed, um, and that is um, the situation for life here on Earth, and basically wanted to look at the details here uh, tonight uh, with everybody. Give me a second here. So I have to say, I'm probably gonna have to come back later and discuss this um, again later tonight. So I'm probably not gonna be able to get through everything, but um, I at least wanted um, to uh, explain um, that this is such an important topic that we really should try to take our time uh, and study things carefully uh, and together and basically look at the situation in as much detail as we can so we can prevent problems as big as we can possibly imagine so basically um, uh, this is a very interesting map um, listing the number of species on our planet uh, in different areas um, so I had a bunch of topics uh, that I wanted to go through and discuss tonight um, and I wanted to start um, actually because we're going to be looking mostly at the land tonight but I wanted to actually start with this video um, which is pretty interesting it explains kind of how the currents work on our planet and also the uh, photoplankton so basically um, the most important kind of life on our planet is probably photoplankton and smaller little animals. Um, so this kind of shows the regions of photoplankton on our planet. Um, and it's a really cool animation so you can start to see um, what's going on in all these different areas um, around the planet. And certainly you can see Galapagos Island here um, being an interesting spot. Um, and then also over here, um, and even Antarctica and uh, the North Pole and each one of these have different types of photoplankton. Uh, if you're not familiar with the photoplankton, you might want to take a look um, at some of the images of different types of plankton. Um, but uh, that video is really cool video, and it's just amazing uh, to look at this and really dive into the details um, on 
this topic. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to pause this from time to time because I am just like rushing this like crazy because this is super important and I just wanted to get the information out to discuss with other people. So uh, I'm really sorry uh, if some of this is going a little bit fast, but I'm gonna do this other animation here that looks really cool as well, showing the poles and the earth kind of spinning around. You can see again, um, all these areas of uh, photoplankton that look really interesting. So uh, in a moment, I'm gonna show you the biomass map and a bunch of other maps. I just wanted to kind of look at this carefully with you um, and kind of discuss uh, what's going on. So I'm gonna just pause this right now um, for a second. So I am super sorry to uh, rush this topic and I just don't know what to do. I'm kind of trying to just figure out um, you know how to discuss this but so basically this region um, is extremely important um, for uh, life on earth both for the ocean and for uh, the uh, above ground uh, area so basically this area and then on the above ground basically we're looking at uh, the Amazon jungle and the Congo jungle, and then also this pink area here. Um, so that's pretty much, if you look at the biodiversity above ground, it's basically almost all entirely in Brazil. So that helps us in some ways because we can kind of focus on saying that this definitely, Brazil, and there's actually parts of Peru, uh, Ecuador, and Bolivia, and Colombia that are also very important in addition to Brazil because there's actually the deepest part of the jungle here in black um, is not really even in Brazil it's actually in uh, Peru or Ecuador so uh, it does help us kind of say like okay we really need to focus on the Amazon and protect the Amazon but it also gives us a new problem because we see that Africa actually doesn't have nearly as much biodiversity as we might have believed about the Congo jungle at first and actually this graph I don't even trust this data so I would say that it's almost better to look at the climate map because you can see some details that don't exist on that biodiversity so there definitely should be a lot of biodiversity in these red regions um, and the question is why doesn't this map look like this map or this map right so basically we know that historically the climate um, does change um, but it probably stays pretty uh, you know wet and rainy and hot near the equator that's always been the case so basically these regions are very important so overall what I would say here um, is that we really got to look at these areas in detail um, this map um, and this map um, very important and I have it uh, loaded up on Google Earth here so I can kind of spin around and take a look at individual areas um, now I wanted to actually uh, discuss them all in detail so so I'm gonna jump into this map um, it's similar to a population map but it's actually what you call a uh, biomass map so it includes all life forms um, not just humans and you can see the importance of the Amazon and the Congo here but man is there a lot of people biomass in the United States Europe and uh, over here in uh, Asia and also you know so it's really a combination of people plus and I, I don't really even know the exact details I'd have to see specifically so but it's it's one criteria that would be very important to look at so I'm gonna be careful here because I gotta go do some things tonight, but um, I am really don't wanna mess up the discussion um, in the details here. So I just wanted to go through what we're looking at really quickly here. And so basically we got a whole picture of Earth here with the different types of photoplankton. Um, there is a map here of each individual species and you may wanna look at this in detail um, to see exactly what's going on. So you can see, this says where the elephants are, but actually it's not even true. There's very much disagreement on where the elephants are. And you can do all kinds of species, including bears 
and other things. So I am almost not going to be able to talk about this tonight because the topic is so important that I just don't know. Uh, it's just out of bounds important. So uh, I'm going to have to pause this and just come back to it in, uh, after a lot more thought in terms of uh, listening to the earth and some other things. So, But one criteria that I would really want you to think about is the ocean here and I discovered this and thought to myself that we really need to clean up what's been going on here in this area so one idea for that is to if you add the fishing vessels you can start to see where the fishing problems are now um, basically if you start combining all these maps you start to see that this area is perhaps being way overfished and it doesn't even show you the extent and you can see there's even tons of fishing boats right here off the coast of India as well so um, so essentially what I was trying to suggest is that these fishing boats should probably stick very closely to the main pathways that freight shipping is already using and in that way we can like in here they're not really staying close to the shipping lanes right and as well as over here, there's some boats off of the main shipping lanes. That way we can kind of preserve um, the areas. So this is definitely a traffic for humans because we're going from, you know, Jakarta, Indonesia to say Perth, Australia. Or through here, we're going, you know, Taiwan, pan around Taiwan and through Singapore. So, and even some of these areas right in here are very important for both biodiversity and everything. But it's important to give fish uh, a chance here to just have a little area that's theirs and for sure theirs. So, uh, yes, it does cause conflict in the shipping zones, but quite honestly, there's some new things we need to think about in terms of freight. There's a lot of freight that goes on the ocean and that's completely empty uh, going back. So, if you feel if you fill the freight one way, it's actually empty going back. A lot of the time so we need to th rethink about how to do that and maybe there's ways to get the fishing involved with the freight um, so that they're not empty and you actually get food on one side of the trip um, as well so I'm a vegetarian so I don't even believe in fishing but I'm just trying to come up with a way to decrease the problem here and at least have some areas so we can see off the coast of Australia here we probably should definitely reserve these areas these empty areas as no fishing zones and actually even try to minimize um, what's going on even in some of these other areas so the complicated part is that when you zoom in here it, there's actually uh, quite a lot of detail um, in terms of the shipping here right so we can say that off the coast here yeah I mean what happens is the fish want to have shallow water to breed and they have uh, different kinds of you know habitats for each kind of fish so but they basically need uh, food uh, to eat as well so uh, but they can probably just stick to the fishing boats through here and they can even come up with better ways to share uh, the boats and other things so I think once you get off of these tracks um, it's just maybe out of bounds in terms of things so you can even zoom in here and start to see how to minimize the problem here so you can see that probably these fishing vessels we should probably focus to this path along here and here and even minimize some of these finer lines through here um, so uh, that would obviously mean that we'd get less fish at least initially but we don't know that in the long term because it could give fish fishes more of a chance to breed again in some of these areas so this area is beyond important. It's hard to explain um, and, and uh, think. So, but internationally, you can start to see basically what's going on. So, and again, you can see down in here, there's a lot of fishing. Now, if you look at this map, you can start to see right in there, there's a lot of actual photoplankton too. So we kind of need to come compromise as well there's certain pathways in here if I let this run you can start to see there's certain pathways that we definitely should protect um, as the photoplankton uh, work so uh, that's another super 
important area to look at. Um, and where were we? So on the marine traffic map there. So also there's this map that shows the coral reefs, right? So again, <laughs> these areas are hugely important for coral reefs, as well as here in the United States or off in between uh, North America and South America and Central America, the Caribbean. So we also have a, an important area to protect off the coast of Florida um, and the entire Caribbean, as well as north of Colombia and along the west coast of Central America and even these areas I've read in the uh, Gulf of California down here in Mexico is extremely important to protect. And you can also see uh, here in the Middle East has a really big chunk and then off the coast of Africa. And all that fishing that we saw over in a moment ago was off of the coast in the coral reef areas in India. So that's a concern. We should maybe even rethink about some of this. And actually, so not only do we want to think about preserving the fishing in the dead center of these coral reefs, like we probably don't want to have fishing right there, but we can maybe compromise and do it around the edges of the coral reefs. So we have to look at both the uh, traffic maps and the coral reef maps and kind of overlay them together and then kind of take a better perspective on how to fish. So uh, that is definitely something to look at. Um, so here's the biomass map. Now here is the salinity map. If you're not familiar with this, this is a very helpful map too. So you can see there's definitely certain areas that have lots of salty water and then perfect water as well for the fish we definitely need to think about that as well so uh, there's just a whole lot of information there so uh, this is where I got the maps and you can also download those as well so I want to talk briefly about why I thought certain areas are very important and there's just each one of these areas requires hours of discussion so it's not a simple reason uh, well I mean it's it's a simple reason in the sense of definitely we should protect these areas but uh, there's just a lot of areas that I should have added even more so it, I just was trying to make it as absolutely simple as possible and then at the same time not just circle everything because people would have been like oh whatever so uh, there's just certain critical areas that really need to be looked at so uh, I'd like to start here, but I'm actually going to start, uh, let's start in Africa, um, just because um, this is so complicated um, here to, to discuss first. So um, so basically, uh, West Africa, the kind of my thinking on this is that, um, you know, I've been looking at the rainfall maps and the climate maps pretty carefully. And as you can see, uh, this is almost all in the United States uh, we basically don't have anything like this we just have a small tip of Florida that is like what is like in Africa so basically we don't even understand the jungle at all right um, and uh, basically uh, Africa this area needs to all be preserved very carefully so we think we have to be careful in Florida, but they have a ginormous area to protect in Africa uh, in particular. So how do you start to understand that area in Africa? Um, obviously, we're going to look at the Amazon in a moment here, but when we look at the areas that need to be protected most, it's probably right along here and then for sure definitely deep in the jungle. But actually, when it gets that wet, so we're basically talking about a combination of things. Like when it gets to be that hot and that wet, um, we have a little bit of a problem for even the animals. So the animals actually like some of the pink areas uh, as well as the red areas. So we need to protect the, uh, you know, for different kinds of organisms. So there's a whole range and it's not just... Um, I'll get into some details in uh, South America here of the importance of Colombia, for instance, um, because you have mountains, you have these high Himalayan mountains, which are taller than the mountains, the Rocky Mountains, right? Uh, and then you also have down to the seafloor. So you basically have a situation where you have hot near the equator with snow, right? So that means you get all the bio biomes, right? So it's perhaps the most important, one of the most important areas to protect in the world because you basically have snow and you have 
heat at all within a few miles sometimes of each other. So that's an unbelievable important area. Now Africa has actually got a lot of hills, but it doesn't necessarily have the mountain range that they have there. But anyway, let's go back to Africa here. So basically what you want to look at here on this concept is that the west coast of Africa really gives us a starting point because of the population is actually very significant. It's starting to be, you know, there's only, there's about 1.2 billion people in Africa now. Um, so basically West Africa is super important and it becomes kind of the key to how we will work on wildlife uh, all around the world, right? Because we have the jungle, basically the Congo jungle right here. And as we get closer and closer to the jungle, it gives us some experience of knowledge of what we need to do. And this particular blue spot is the critical point because at that point we get into uh, the Walla Cameroon and basically Cameroon becomes the door to the actual Congo and the, one of the problems is one of some of the biggest cities now in all of Africa are actually right deep inside the jungle and um, I'm trying to listen to this dog bark and I probably am missing some concepts here that I need to discuss um, but yeah so I'm going to just skip here and try to listen to the dog barking outside a little bit here but uh, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that also, so there's basically two doors to the jungle, right? So we have, um, you know, we, we basically have uh, this other door on this side. So there's basically West Africa, which is the traditional part of Africa um, and where most of the people live. In it. So, but, but there's also like kind of this back door to Africa, which is the East African side. Um, and if you look at the map here, you can see that the biodiversity is also extremely important there. And that's because you have a mountain range kind of uh, that drains into the Congo, Congo River. So this mountain range that runs along here, um, it's not as significant as the mountain range here, but it's still a mountain range, creates that uh, snow and all these different climates. So you basically have, when you have all the different climates, you start to get all the different types of animals so and actually some a lot of the bigger animals have moved out of west africa and my personal perspective is that at one time in history we had a lot of elephants uh chimpanzees and you know gorillas and all those bigger animals giraffes rhinos they all lived in west africa today they pretty much do not live in west africa they live in small little patches uh, and the dog is really barking now and <laughs> i'll explain to you on this is that this map is not true you see these small patches these are like only a couple miles and let's see if we can get imagery on this here so uh a dog is going crazy out there right now but these are small little specks it, it, it's not even true like i've looked at other maps that explain where the animals are <laughs> this is not true this is not where elephants live there there actually is almost no place that they live at all you know so it's like we're, we're basically talking about you know like yeah it's supposed to be the jungle but like you know what it really is it's like it's it's kind of there's some major problems right now so yes there's a lot of forest and jungle in here but um you know it's it's not what you think uh if you zoom in and you look at some of the things so uh i mean we're so I, I really feel that I'm not explaining the problem seriously enough. Um, it's just out of bounds. Like the African situation, if we can solve this, in, like, like yes, like we're starting to get some problems in Manaus, for instance, right? And you've got a major city right smack here in the jungle. And the same thing goes on in, in uh, Africa, right up on the Congo River. You have one of the largest cities in all of Africa. Uh, two of them, in fact. So, uh, and then Nigeria is right over here, and then Cameroon, so and then Rwanda on this side. So, this does not, it doesn't explain to us the seriousness uh, of the problem. And so, like, basically, when you look at this here, you start to see that, you know, like, it, it's actually, this can't all be just human, right? So, we're, we're starting to have Africa. Africans basically are at the forefront of really deciding what will happen because in Brazil, you know, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo are basically down here. There are a couple of cities up here and Venezuela as well and Colombia. So Colombians probably really understand 
the wildlife situation because they're smack dead right here in the in the biodiversity area so but the peruvians do as well because they got this but, but the thing is when the city is right in the jungle it's 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 big when you're right in the jungle and you have the city that's a whole different story so brazil does have rio de janeiro down here but again that's not the amazon so manaus definitely has that key that africa has um but uh it, it it's uh, it's important to realize the extent uh because a africa has bigger animals so what happened in africa is that um so like the amazon jungle is essentially flat Right? And um, it, it's a, it's very flat, right? And there's no, there's not even wind in the jungle there. So, and there's also not much wind in the Congo jungle, right? Um, so it's very flat, and there's a lot of trees, it's dense um, vegetation now. But the problem is that the animals have been basically pushed out of the jungle, um, and even put into zoos and cages, and they're basically moved into uh, parts of uh, uh, the. Let's see here. So. They basically moved in here into uh, these uh, safari areas where you go on a safari in Africa and it's basically they're feeding the animals. Yes, you see a giraffe or a, a lion or whatever, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a, you know, a, a, and the problem is that <laughs> they're basically being fed by the people and not off the natural habitat, right? Because there's basically. I mean, people everywhere now. So, uh, so it's a very big concern um, to protect what we do have, and these very specific regions need to be extreme. And, and this is a huge uh, concern here. So let me change the. Uh, see if I can turn off this uh, here, so you can start to see the actual. Uh, sorry about this. So, so you can start to see the actual shape of the jungle here. Uh, and then the, uh, the the climate classification. Now, uh, the problem is that certain areas that are extremely important, like right in here, that is basically a major city called Kampala, Uganda, right? And it's basically right there. And then you have Rwanda, which is basically right in here. And that's also major cities and big populated, you know, millions of people living there. And when one person, uh, this is the key to understand, is that one person requires at least two football fields and sometimes up to eight or even, let's say, 12 football fields worth of food per year. So can you imagine a million people and just a couple million people in the city and plus all the football fields you would need to feed those people? And what about the animals, right? So you got to understand, look in the United States, right? Let, like, let's... Let's, let's look in the United States, right? Everywhere we got is farmland. Everything has been farmed, right? Everything, right? If we zoom in here, this has all been farmed. Every little piece of this possible piece that you can possibly think. You drive through the Midwest, everything is farmed. There's not, there's not forest. There's not anything. There's just farmland. We can absolutely not do that to the jungle. So, and it's actually already starting to happen. And you can see from the color of this that it's starting to be discolored. And this was very dark trees at one point. And you can see up in other areas, you can see that this is uh, not populated areas, but basically all of India, like this entire area is all farmland. There is no wildlife left in all of India, right? Okay, so like it's, it's all been farmed out. This area, Thailand, all entirely farmed out. All of this is farmed out in China, okay? Like there is all farm, like, it is out of bounds, right? So basically when you have billions of people, when we have 12 billion people on earth, there's a lot of farmland when it takes at least, like I looked at the numbers, it's at least, it's at least like, let's say five football fields per person, you know, to feed you. So, and and basically we, we have to start thinking about the wildlife, right? So like, what about the animals? And, and actually from what I'm reading is that, you know this this picture here like when you look at the the climate map 
we put this on here it's not even this and also the, the problem is it's it cuts down to like a few miles like these these areas that they live in the animals live in like they once could roam like all across africa but it's like like think about what happens in america they have fences right like there's like i live in a free range state where you have you know the cows can be free range but like we absolutely have to have that you know in in these other areas because like it's just like they, they, the animals got to be able to move around and now in india they they actually respect the cows and they try to let them wander the streets and things like that um but um you know it's it's just uh it's just it's hard to explain like what and, and i'm not and i can't explain it enough you know i'm seeing the moon through the uh, light on my window here right now just telling me like uh, i don't know just i feel like uh, how do i explain this but it's like the you only have a couple miles and a couple hundred chimpanzees left i mean and even them like they're not really i mean they, they almost entirely depend on humans to feed them they, they don't have a natural habitat so um but uh how do we work with this so um so let me go back to the other map here um and uh look at this in detail so basically this is where we know that there's a lot of biodiversity so why did i look at africa first is because it's a central piece of the puzzle of what to do like uh you know we absolutely have to be cautious about even traveling to some of these areas um because uh you know you can get sick and die you know my brother traveled over here to bolivia and then went into the jungle to see what it was like and almost died from a sickness um and uh, it's much even worse than I can explain. I, I can't explain it on a video here. So, um, but, uh, you know, basically, uh, the importance of these islands, now, I, I circled some of these in weird colors. So I basically said here that, you know, we have Madagascar here and we also had Papua New Guinea. And these are some of the most uninhabited place. Some people here have never heard of a computer there's like indigenous people that live in the jungle and they don't know anything about they've never even seen a map of the earth before right so uh and there's also wildlife there uh in unexplored areas um but uh essentially you got a mountain range that runs through papua new guinea here so it doesn't completely explain how important papua new guinea is even though there's not a lot about diversity there there's also a wide climate and you can see the climate here there's a little blue green strip through here which is the mountain range and that's very important it kind of gets back to like what it's like in venezuela which you can see a lot even more color variation through there so but basically what you have here is you have a central region and this gets back into the fishing question that we discussed earlier is that the fish is super important so basically this initial region here actually has a little bit less people but there are major cities uh popping up on these islands so uh and actually even the north part of this is being farmed now so there's just a huge question about how to deal with these islands and they're almost like private we almost need to rethink about never populating some of these islands in these regions um and particularly this white area because it's kind of the combination of multiple countries like we have basically um, philippines here indonesia here papua new guinea australia uh, and then parts of malaysia coming in through here and then even vietnam the coast of vietnam so uh, it doesn't really explain everything because uh, you know, we basically had this combination in here where we really need to really think about it carefully because we're having uh, basically the variety. You can see how these the deepest trench in the world comes through here in the water. So you basically have a variety of water depths in the water um, as well as uh, mountains coming up here from the volcanoes um, and just a whole variety of stuff. Um, as well so this area is extremely important and i would say just don't fish here and this is actually the area that we really have to reconsider um, in terms of our entire planet so 
going back to the Africa point, though, is that this island, uh, this island also can help us understand a lot of what we need to do over here in other areas. So, and even our islands here in the Caribbean can definitely give us a guide to what we should be doing over here. So, I circled some areas here, and yes, there's some land, but it doesn't. The reason there don't it doesn't show the biodiversity in the water here, right? So, we basically have lot of different types of fish and coral reefs so it doesn't this map doesn't show us really what we need to know so this this area here and these windward islands uh, are also extremely important right there's also this andaman island here um, and these other islands in between so the philippines basically the big city manila is on the north side and then there's also some big cities on the south side and then a bunch of small islands well why not protect the middle islands here in particular in the philippines Right? And the same thing goes here, these middle islands here, but actually these we have islands that don't show up on this picture, and there's some small islands there. And here is the Galapagos Island you can see out in this point here. So there's a whole lot of complicated things. And this red area is perhaps the most important area as well. Uh, like this area was very important, but actually this area here is very important um, for the land species um, and things. So if you think about um, so, man, I, I'm really sorry to be rushing this, but, you know, like, when we think about conflict, um, you know, we don't want to have uh, conflict with the actual animals on our planet. We want to work with them and learn from them. Um, and, uh, you know, when we learn from the animals here, we don't really have anything in North America. If you think about it, you know, we're talking about 12,000 species per dot here, um, or uh, 1200 and basically uh, in the United States like you got a bird maybe on your street and that's about it right so like basically it's it we just don't understand um, and you know basically um, certain areas we really need to think carefully about so um, and going back to the Africa point you know basically it starts here in West Africa and then because there's population centers like Nigeria becoming one of the most important uh, areas on earth uh, in terms of population. So, um, but going back to this area, let's see if we can zoom in. I can show you some details here. Um, so basically, right, we got, we got this little sliver of biodiversity here. Now this is very important area because, um, you know, basically this island, uh, which I circled and put this little static thing around. There's not a whole, there is a lot, there's millions and millions of people, but it's actually got a lot of biodiversity here and we probably should just entirely say we gotta keep this 100% for uh, wildlife as well as the island of Borneo. So, <laughs> and then, and then uh, also here. So the problem is how to control the uh, cities. Now in, Jakarta is an interesting question because Java, what they've done is they basically kept most of the people on the island of Java. Um, give me one second here. So I have a simple website. I don't know if this is going to always be the best way, but I collect maps. Um, and one of the maps is this population map. And you can start to see from this map uh, the details of the situation. So you can see all the people in West Africa and how that's starting to... Uh, get in here now it doesn't explain the seriousness of the problem india starts to explain the seriousness of the problem because you can see in china and india india is almost entirely packed basically there's no wildlife i mean there's a lot of animals there but it's it's basically it's basically people and uh you know people there so and the same thing goes in china so it basically it, it doesn't explain the seriousness of the problem and i'm sorry about that but basically you can see right along the mountain range so basically what really is the truth is that people have pushed the animals up into the mountains right so all of this area used to be wildlife i guarantee you that it wasn't like this map at all. So this map is entirely, it's a very valuable map, but it's not how it should be. And that's why we start to need to use these pink areas as well as the red areas to really understand the truth of the, and the seriousness of the problem, right? So 
basically what happened here in India is they pushed them up into the Himalaya Mountains. And from what I understand, the rhinos and everything has been pushed back into this little cavern here. There's a mountain range that kind of goes in here. So, uh, and everything else has been farmed. And it's actually been farmed to the point of turning into almost like the desert, right? You can see this is desert region. So there's like blueness in here. So basically there's, <laughs> it's only farms in that region in India. And you can see, uh, if I go back from the population, is that it's all people, right? So basically, and that's starting to happen in Africa. Remember there was that really vital region right along this coast. Look at all the people right at the edge of where that major biodiversity region was. If these guys start to say, hey, let's live there, it's done, man, it's done. Like, we can't do that. So it's like, they're right on the border here and the same thing goes here. You got Cameroon and there's basically a, a right there. And this is that very large city that I was talking about right in the center of the jungle. You can see it's actually one of the largest in the whole entire continent of Africa. So that is a very important city. Now it's not, we got to rethink about it because man, it's nice to live by the jungle, but where are you going to get your food, right? So it, it, it's, it's maybe okay uh, to, uh, you know, like visit the jungle or to live near the jungle. But when you're living right in the jungle, there's a whole new responsibility for food. And when you require at least, like we're talking 12 football fields in some cases to feed you, right? Uh, at, at the very, like, like, so 12 football fields and you have a city of, you know, the, we're talking, uh, you know, per dot here, we're, this is getting to be a very, uh, you know, millions and millions of people. So basically, and then not to mention, so we're basically looking at 1.2 billion people, right, in Africa. Where is the farmland for that, right? So, you know, and, and that's that's the concern, right? So basically, uh, it's got to be, there's got to be room for the animals. And I'm not, again, I feel like I'm not explaining this good enough because, man, I mean, what... <laughs> I mean, the, the animals need to be able to get around, right? So you can see that this doesn't explain it either because it shows a small patch here where the animals have kind of maybe worked their way through from one side of the jungle to the other. But why doesn't it go through here? Well, the answer might be because of farmland problems. You know, there's a major train that runs through the Congo jungle now. Um, and that's not necessarily bad, but when it's on the ground and it doesn't allow animals to go over the train track and you know it basically becomes a fence uh for the for the jungle which is kind of a question right so anyway so basically going back to whoa sorry about that uh going back to this region um we're gonna zoom in even more here and i'm sorry uh to look at this uh, so detailed but there's so much more that we need to look at uh, so there's some regions that i looked at carefully that don't really show up again is that so we basically have this area here uh, in Vietnam that has a lot of biodiversity. And actually, this is the scary part. Notice how there's nothing in here. The reason for that is this is all 100% farmland. This is called Thailand, right? And basically the same thing was what happened here in India that even happened to a greater extent or about the same extent in Thailand, right? So you basically have 100% farmed through the into the jungle. You can see that's just like it just like really goes and the reason they're not farming here is because guess why there's mountain range along the coast of vietnam so they basically pushed up all the wildlife back up into the mountains and that is the key area where you have the wildlife right is right in the mountains so and man if you know what's going on where i live they have tractors that are basically looking like tanks and uh, i don't want to talk about it but they basically farm on the hills uh, and that's getting pretty wild. Like I, 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 I was from Chicago area originally and everything was flat there and you farm there. And when I got out here, I was like, I could not believe that where they were farming. I was like, there are hills that you basically are at 45 degree angles. Um, so, um, sorry, someone uh, messaged me here, but, um, but yeah, uh, so there's just so much, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, like we need help, right? We need to, we need to really think about this carefully. Um, and uh, again, I'm kind of like looking outside here and I need to take a walk 
and get offline here, but um, you know, these areas are all extremely important. And like I said, is that take a careful look at the climate map. This is the Copenhagen climate classification map. Um, and basically, um, you can start to see some of the regions. So basically, this is the Thailand area, and they basically farmed all throughout in through here, right? And then India even farmed out through here. So, and then China's completely farmed out over here too. So um, basically, um, you know, uh, this area, you know, China, if you look at the population map, we basically have... You know, we, we got a really, we got a really, you can see that this entire island is populated, right? So they basically filled up all of Indonesia right here. And then even Philippines is even on these smaller islands is a lot of people, right? So basically that is one of the things to think about, right? So um, another philosophy is how to, um, you know, basically think about, uh, you know, trying to, select certain islands as the keys of where you should be only so uh let me let me go back to this map really quickly on this so again the seriousness here is that these islands circled here is that they don't show biodiversity but that's why i circled uh v vietnam in particular is because you have the biodiversity here so the population basically has taken over all this blue that the reason this is all blue is population has taken it over and there's no biodiversity it's just people right so basically that's the truth of china right um and but on the south coast of china that's where you start to have to really start to think about the biodiversity because there's actually wildlife there so Vietnam becomes extremely important as a doorway to getting out into the rest of the area here and as well as this island. This is this is this is Taiwan. This is Hunan. This is an island for China. So this is basically China's key. China doesn't own necessarily Vietnam. Um, but they do have this at this island here and they can start to work on some of the ocean habitat questions. If they can't solve it here, they're never going to solve the complexity out here. This is very complex, but at least we can start on these islands here. And the same thing goes for Sri Lanka. And it does not explain uh, this map. You can see there is actually a lot of, there should be a lot of biodiversity in Sri Lanka, right? But there's not because guess what? There is a billion people in India. And a lot of them are actually trying to move out of India to other areas, right? And so basically, uh, you know, that's why this island becomes super important. And well, you can see this island here in China. It doesn't... So basically the map, what I'm trying to explain here... Uh, excuse me, sorry. So let's go back to uh, this thing. So if you look at the picture here, you can start to see uh, that that basically... The coastline here is actually less populated, um, but it becomes a key. So India and Sri Lanka can start to use, and even the Andaman Islands, which is actually part of India, is extremely important for India to look at um, to how to deal with the situation of wildlife, right? So you don't actually have to go all the way here to start working on the problem. So. Uh, you can start right in your own town. So, um, uh, and as, as a quick reminder, um, you know, we have a water fountain in the center of our town, and we also have a, we had a broken, it was broken all year until this month. They finally fixed it, and then they added chlorine into the water so the birds don't even drink the water. But, uh, you know, essentially having, uh, you know, uh, uh, some public area for the water and the birds and the animals um, parks and things like that really help a lot right um, and things so but anyway so we're trying to look at the specific things here so again Vietnam is a very important key here so uh, let me go back to the map so that's why I circled Vietnam so it really starts in Vietnam before you get out in the mainland and most of the people do live in these areas right so it basically Vietnam is critical and actually 
uh, Singapore and Malaysia, and it's hard to circle this properly, but because of the because of this island, Kuala Lumpur, uh, which is a Muslim country uh, here, a Muslim area, uh, this all area is very vital. So it basically starts right here in Malaysia. Um, so it's actually it's actually part uh, you know Thailand heads out into here, and then you get Malaysia. So Malaysia becomes very important. Um, you can see it's probably even more important than all of India, um, this area, right? Because India, India is basically done, right? Like it's all it's all populated, right? So what what are they gonna do? Like, uh, you know, like if you look at this map. Um, I mean, it's all population in India, right? It's all population in China. Like, it, there's basically, you know, uh, what, what? How do you uh, how do you begin to to deal with wildlife? Well, you don't have wildlife. So uh, you got to actually redo the situation, and that's why the west coast of India is so important because uh, it can help work on that, and even on this side too. So, and Bangladesh plays a vital role because it's basically the floodplain here, and it's right along Myanmar. So Myanmar, it's hard to explain how important this is without looking at the water maps, and I'm really sorry I'm going to get into more detail in a moment here. Uh, we're going to look at these water maps, but so this is the rain map so it's not only climate climate is part of rain and you can start to see i i highlighted certain areas because we we basically so you have this part of the jungle here in the Congo. we, we were looking at this area here but uh but if you look in detail here you can start to see uh the specific regions that we really need to watch out for on the rain map so uh, and there's even parts here now this is only one month so in the bottom corner here you basically have uh, January so uh, that's uh, the first month of the year and then you got the second month of the year here and it totally changes on the second month of the year uh, and then the Sun is in the southern hemisphere at this time right so you can see uh, you got to zoom in and take a look at this this is FAO maps um, but uh, basically this starts to give us a picture of where this is really vital to look at um, and it actually doesn't give us that detail that we need on these climate maps um, because we have to look at the monthly rain maps to really start to see and now you start to see Madagascar come in here with that huge amount of rain we're talking about a meter a full meter of rain uh, in one month um, so you can see India basically getting no rain uh, in that month so uh, again, as you look back at this map, um, again, it doesn't really show us what we need to see without looking at these rain maps. So let's look at them carefully um, to see. So I hope I didn't skip anything that you might need here. But uh, basically, so the climate is a certain climate throughout the year. It's like an average, but that doesn't really tell us per month it doesn't give us that kind of detail. So the rain maps is perhaps the best way to look at it. Um, and actually, um, so the climate, this is like the average climate throughout the whole year, right? So you can see here and here. So I'm gonna go through these a little bit quickly, but I just wanted to make a couple points here uh, that I circled. I Obviously this whole area is very important and you need to zoom in on that. But remember the biodiversity really is in the, the jungle here and the deepest part of the jungle, there's certain pockets here that are extremely important. And I'm almost afraid to even show them on a video because we don't, I mean, we shouldn't be going there. We shouldn't be doing anything. Like they, we should actually just protect those areas. And there's a little pocket right here in Colombia that's like that year round. And I didn't circle it because I, I'm not even sure if I should talk about it. So some regions I kind of skipped um, and didn't discuss just because, man, they should just be, that, that, that should be the wildlife area. So again, now the second month, you can start to see uh, some of this area here starts, the rain starts to move a little bit towards the north and the equator. But you can see there's certain pockets here. Um, and again, this pocket here, and then you can start to see some details here in Africa and as well as some very significant rain off the coast here this is Papua New Guinea right so these islands are actually very important islands remember because we're talking about the fish we're not just talking about the above water animals so and then now as you start to get into the fourth month of the year April the rain starts to pick up in India and you can see the pocket of Bangladesh 
that whole pocket right there. And this whole side here, this is why Malaysia was so important is because the rain starts to pick up in that region. You can see also in southern China and then here. So I picked out even Taiwan on that picture there. Uh, and then you can start to see here, India gets really, that rain hits along the coast here and going back to that other map, you can see here, this is the climate map, right? So again, uh, these areas here, um, so there's also this tip of Africa. Remember, we were talking, originally we began the discussion on West Africa. So you can start to see that this actually is, like, where is the rain in the jungle? Well, so so here's the problem, right? So you basically have, this is the rain, and actually now there's people that live here. There's a bunch of even countries. There's huge, massive cities, beach towns, and things like that here in West Africa. But, man, um, you know, it, it is it is okay to have it dry sometimes because there's different kinds of animals so but there's that pocket here that's wet but essentially we can start to solve the jungle problems way out here in west africa because they're getting the kind of rain that the animals and the plants need um, and you can see here this is getting into venezuela and some other areas so i'm not sure if i'm explaining this enough but even in india it has that pocket here but man are you getting a lot of rain in one month a whole meter of rain along the coast there right so you can see there's huge areas of rain and specific islands that we really need to think about so as you can see this problem is a, and there's a lot more stuff to it than this so basically each individual area now this is the yucatan peninsula in mexico so actually mexico is very vital um this yucatan is probably going to be entirely farmed out it's a flat area and it's farmable uh, and then the mountain range along the coast here, uh, which actually goes up into California and the Rockies, that is probably where the animals are going to stay. Um, but, uh, you know, so there is a question because we depend on Mexico for our food in the wintertime. And, uh, you know, that's very vital to look at this region here and you can see the importance of that um, and actually how the rain actually goes into Venezuela here and actually isn't even in the Congo. So the Venezuela portion becomes very important uh, in that month. So um, there's just a huge amount of rain through Colombia. And this, again, uh, the biodiversity here is very important because you got the mountain range, Andes going all the way through here and then up through the west coast of Mexico and Central America. So, but basically Colombia is very critical in that image. You can see that and it's actually as Remember, all the, almost all the biodiversity that we're looking at is still in the jungle here. And now you start to see some of this coastal region. And the problem here is that, yes, this is the heart of the jungle. But actually, why shouldn't the animals be allowed to go to the coast? Like, should it all just be beach towns uh, and stuff like that? We kind of got to preserve some of this. So that's the importance of this area in Colombia. There's naturally not a whole lot of people living there on the west coast of Colombia, and that habitat is very important uh, to keep as just pure jungle. So, and the same thing goes here, and you can kind of see that's why Cameroon, it's even a separate country. If you notice here, this is Nigeria, this is Cameroon. This country here is vital as almost a doorway to block further development into the jungle but there's also a south side and you can see uh, right there so uh, again um, in this area and I'm kind of avoiding it because I don't want to uh, mess up anything here in the discussion because there's just so much detail in this region that uh, we need to look at and um, and even in the Amazon you know so there's these pockets here that show up and probably what happened originally is the animals much like what they do in africa a lot of the larger species are in east africa now because they've been pushed out of west africa and they probably went across here and went down there or even along the coastline and around that way so uh basically what's happened in the jungle here is that the rio de janeiro and sao paulo are basically major cities so this is all becoming populated and farmland because remember you have to have farmland if you have millions of people in your city, so where is the farms? Well, that's all throughout here in Brazil. Um, so uh, basically, um, yeah, so we kind of, I mean, after discussing this, I mean, I'm just realizing we kind of need to have 
you know, you, you, we kind of got to have some, like, uh, agreements, uh, spiritual agreement here and be like, well, we're just not going to live and farm in the jungle at all, right? Um, and keep it as natural habitat. So um, there's got to be some, some things like that. So, again, here's some other areas. Uh, here you can see the rain coming up here. And, again, this west coast of Colombia being hugely important. Uh, and then also this is all populated right the island of java as we looked at and you can see sri lanka as well here um, so and then now you start to see the opposite coast so this is this middle island chunk here so we we're looking at this this is that middle section there um, and you can see the rain being very important and also malaysia so there's a huge amount of rain right here on this peninsula and presto the biodiversity is huge right there as well so that whole peninsula is turning into all people right now uh, on both sides of the peninsula, right? You have Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, and then another city right over there. So that's all a concern. And then you have some weird things to think about. So here is a tip of Australia being super important and that actually the coral reefs getting back into that discussion. So uh, maybe that's where we should kind of there's a little bug crawling up my ankle right now. It's kind of funny. Um, but uh, so uh, where was I? So yeah, so the, uh, the coral reef maps, probably we should close on that. Um, so basically we're talking about all these coral reefs um, through here and we kind of got to be cautious about some things, right? So basically this is a very important way to look at it so if you look at what's happened here on earth like you basically have all of europe turning into a farm and people we have all of india turning into a farm and people all of china farm and people all of west africa farm and people the entire united states farm and people okay so basically we have the amazon left here right and we actually have quite a lot of population right here in indonesia so we have a couple of key islands here that haven't been populated yet and that's not necessarily say go you know anyway so basically you know there's a lot of complexity here on in everything so uh you know down in south america these major cities sao paulo and rio play a huge role in what and you can see um if i zoom in here uh essentially this this whole area so and this doesn't show the farmland on top of this so let me hold on a second okay so i'm gonna add this gleaming on global farmland so you can see exactly what's going on right so basically if you look at this map this is just the farmland agreement map and it's not even true right so it's just kind of true so i'm gonna look at this like this uh so you can kind of see i'll try to do this best i can so basically all of Europe is a farmland. America, well, you got to realize there's Rocky Mountains and desert down in here. We're not going to be farming there. We're not going to be farming in the desert here. So basically what's going on, right, is that, right, you got everything in India farmed. China, well, you can't farm out here because it's a desert. Same thing goes here. You know, you can't farm in Australia because that's all Australian desert. So here's the question right so as you start to talk about all these farms you are basically starting to encroach into the amazon jungle here and nigeria as we see is almost all farmland now in the northern side as you go through here so and it doesn't explain this this map definitely does not explain you know if you're familiar with the midwest and in america it is all farmland okay so it does not this is not even the truth right so it shows India completely farmed out. Um, so uh, we need to stop at some point here and say this is not going to be farmland, right? So basically, going back to this map, right, is that this is the biodiversity regions, right? And what we need to do is we have to start to say that these pink regions, we already have farmed all of this and all of this in here. This is all farmland, right? So basically the pink stuff is definitely already being farmed pretty much right people are looking at farming that even this red zone here is being farmed so 
basically these red zones we absolutely need to even protect a hundred percent and and that means the west coast of india and an entire island of sri lanka right so uh, you basically have to protect these regions and even get your food from somewhere else and not build have a farm on that property because it's basically probably should be wildlife um, so and there's certain regions here so if we go back to that global agreement on farmland we can start to see and it, um sorry about this okay anyway so yeah i'm gonna try to close up this conversation but uh, there's just a lot of stuff to look at so uh, basically um take a look at <laughs> as much stuff as you can but there's a lot of spiritual progress that we need to work on as well thinking about how to work on a planet that should have a lot of biodiversity as well you can see that some of these regions that we talked about that are should be all red actually have not very much wildlife so that's a problem and that's actually a way a guide that we can use to restart to look at areas that we need to rethink about in terms of wildlife every single area here as you can see, I should have just circled everything. Um, but there's specific details that we need to look at, um, and we can start with some of these areas um, here. So, um, and particularly what I would say is that the, the missing pieces that are actually even more important than what I circled are the bridges between these regions. So you can see there's like a kind of a light pathway through here. These pathways are the ways that the animals migrate, right? Like it's terrible to be stuck in a cage. Like they're pretty much all trapped. The animals are all trapped against the mountain range here, the mountain range here. They're up in the mountains here. They're trapped against the mountains here. Um, and they're basically being put, you can see that there's a lot of pressure against this mountain range. This is the Andy mountain range here. And there's kind of this area here where they're thinning out and that's pretty much because of human population so basically these areas here can actually help us the the things that i didn't circle can help us as well right so basically thinking about that is very important so anyway um i really hope that we can really discuss this a lot more uh, i'm gonna keep looking at this and I hope you have some good ideas as well about what we can do. So um, I'm really scared, uh, to be honest. I'm, it's very difficult uh, to go through all the details um, of this. Um, and uh, man, just try to take a look at some things um, and come up with an idea about where you think is super important and where we can work on trying to help the animals. And my other discussion is probably um, a little bit more on the spiritual side and on the practical side because uh you know we kind of need to be we have to be good people um to actually start to care about the wildlife and things like that first um, so that's a really big concern because you know i try to be a vegetarian and not eat meat and things like that so um start with something like that in your life um, but definitely these areas are super important um, in the united states um, unfortunately we live uh you know a, a lot of people a lot of people in europe uh and in the u.s actually don't have any wildlife whatsoever um, so uh it's hard for us to appreciate what's going on in the United States, um, except for maybe this little piece in Florida, right? And then you got Puerto Rico down here. So there are certain, no matter where you live, you know, I just try to be nice to the birds and the animals and even to everybody that I know. So it really starts by being nice to people around us and getting along and trying to figure out how to feed everybody. Um, but also, so like, you know there's a problem because you know a lot of people send me messages about not having food or just needing help in general and uh, it's pretty scary because the problem actually starts with making sure all the animals on earth are doing good too so I just wanted to really really carefully look at the situation uh, for the animals because um, you know it's it's kind of a complicated spiritual question when we don't have food uh, we're actually taking land away from the animals 
um, and maybe we need to reconsider what's going on very carefully um, both in the ocean and on the land so as you look at these details so uh, anyway so I'm going to pause for a second and uh, take a walk here and think about some things and I'll be right back um, so hey uh, so yeah so there's just so much to look at and understand here so um, you know I, I the only thing you know I, I live in an area where there isn't much wildlife at all and uh, you know I try my absolute best to listen to every bird uh, there was a really interesting dog out today um, and uh, you know every animal I uh, you know, the crows were kind of talking to me today and some things but um you know i just try to listen very carefully you know to the earth the wind and everything um and understand what's going on you know some days i'll look up at the sky and just try to see like does it look polluted like what's going on uh right here where i live um and trying to understand the situation you know like you know if it looks really polluted i try not to even think about driving a car and stuff like that so uh you know and uh there's just a lot of things uh, to think about like that um and you know the dog is barking next door again you know i tried to i try to do something about it you know if i <laughs> my dog is the dog next door is barking i see what i can do so um and uh you know i have a little pet mouse or whatever in the house and i'm trying to figure out what to do about it so um anyway uh but there's nowhere near like we like i just talked about a couple animals we're talking about 1200 in uh, plus animals per speck on that map right that we had here so basically the biodiversity down here we don't even understand what's going on in europe north america india has some clue you know, in Southeast Asia, they definitely understand. Africa and South America understands, but we do not understand. And there's a lot of work to do. So, uh, in terms of education here, um, and uh, if you think it doesn't matter, um, you know, uh, you really need to rethink about a lot of things. So, uh, basically, um, how we understand this problem. So, the one reason, like, uh, so the computer stuff is one question right so it, it basically if we're really trying to get our freedom and do more things in our lives we gotta think about uh the, all the life on our planet so uh anyway i i'm really sorry about this presentation um but i'm really frustrated because there's just so much work to do in understanding what's going on um and uh We've been talking for about an hour or so here about this discussion, but man, there's a lifetime of work, lifetimes beyond lifetimes. This is this is the rest of our entire future of our planet Earth that we're talking about, right? This is about you know even even alien life, right? Like living on other planets. Like what are we gonna do really far from now, right? So. If we can't if we can't solve this problem living together with all these animals here on our planet, how are we ever going to do it anywhere else? So basically, it's a super important problem, right? So we have to really think about it carefully um, and think. So um, and uh, you know, it starts by um, the the details right around us. Um, Anyway, I'm really sorry if I haven't explained it good enough. I'm trying my best uh, to explain it, and I hope I I hope you've really got some exciting things to study yourself and think about um, as you travel or as you work or whatever you're trying to do. Um, you know, every day. Um, you know, I uh, I had a dog a while ago. I'm totally afraid to get another dog, um, but um, basically. You know, I'd rather help other people take care of their animals than uh, deal with my, you know, anyway. So, uh, but uh, basically, uh, yeah, so there's so many things here and it's hard to, I'm sitting here looking at this information or looking at maps of Earth, but this is our planet. Like, this is where we live, right? This is like, this is it. Like, we're not, like, they say it's going to take, like, you know, thousands of years to get to another solar system. Like, this is all we got is this this planet really that's like this right this is it like like 
we don't have any backup plan. Like, like we're not, we're not gonna have a, a jungle, you know, like anytime soon on any other, anywhere near this. So this is it. Like, we gotta figure this out. Um, and uh, you know, so it is kind of like I feel like maybe, you know, and and I, I guess you know, as I think about things, I need to. I'm trying to like really, uh, you know, be super friendly and try to really work on solving this kind of problem like you know i realize that we're all kind of in conflict sometimes and anyway there's just so much topics to think about here anyway so i really i really pray that you can have a great experience studying our planet and looking at all these details and it can be way more fun than i'm making it out to be like this is not the way that i want to discuss this i'm talking about this as an emergency situation like this is like you know the, the right way to do this is to really have fun uh exploring and understanding our planet um and just looking at all the details and, and you know it starts by like you, know, you see a bird and talk to the bird and do some fun things like you know but uh basically there's 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 a lot of stuff here you know whether you live in africa or south america or southeast asia no matter where you live, wherever you're watching this from, like there's, you know, obviously I live in a poor part of the world. Like I'm just living here in the United States where we don't have anything in terms of biodiversity. You know, I'm trying to do the best I can to look at all these other places, but man, there's so much more work to do. Um, you know, if you live in South America and in, in Brazil or Africa, you know, there is a ton of like, you know, if, 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 an, if, if a European travels, or American travels to all these areas, you know, we gotta really study what's going on in these areas. And also, you know, my uh, his friend is visiting me, he's getting older, and older adults, uh, you know, have money sometimes and they can travel or, or help out uh, with the situation. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we, we're all kind of living on this planet that is, uh, you know, doing great. And I don't wanna say that we're doing bad, but, um, and I don't want to say we're doing good either, but there's a lot of things um, here. So, uh, but no matter where you live, um, you know, there's something that we can do. Like here I am, I live in a place where there's nothing. So anyway, so basically, definitely, I'm really interested in talking with you. If you have, if you live in any of these places, I would love to try to work with you and find out what we can do to figure out the situation, you know, so, um, and see what we can do to try to help. So please let me know um, what's going on. I do try to have friends from all over the world and it's been very interesting uh, to make friends with people and see what I can do to try to help. But the situation is really bad in some places um, and it's unbelievably bad and, and uh, it's been very helpful but uh, to try to help people. So, um, and I would say, yeah, so if you have any other questions, uh, you know, I'm basically, you know, I, you know, my strategy is to pray about it, be wise spiritually, and also study all the details. So basically just do the best I can. But, uh, you know, basically there's a lot of people that are very knowledgeable and, and you know, like, like, yes, there's some of the best universities supposedly in the world, or say in the United States, or in Europe, or in Asia, but honestly, this is where it's at. Like, if you really want to study stuff, um, there's a lot of interesting life to look at on Earth. Um, and it's not even like that. There's also the North Pole and the South Pole. Like, a lot of my work has been on the South Pole. But anyway, so all kinds of ways that are interesting. So anyway, I'll talk with you later. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'm sorry if it's been really long. Uh, see you later. Have a great uh, experience. And I hope we can really help our planet as much as possible. Thank you so much.